Here's a tip on the law of cosines that you don't see a lot in textbooks. When you're given an oblique triangle, and in this case, we're going to be given a side angle side. So that means we're gonna have something like five, 40 degrees, and then like seven. In this case, we don't have a ratio. So we have to use the law of cosines, right? We can't use the law of sines. But how do we go ahead and approach this? Well, obviously, there's only one thing that we can solve for. Whenever you're given an angle, that is going to be your opposing side length that you're gonna have to be able to solve. So that's not the tip. That should be hopefully obvious. So you're gonna use the law of cosines to go ahead and figure out our A. And then the best thing about the law of cosines is you can use the law of cosines to find these missing angles. But for any of you that have used the law of cosines, you recognize it's a lot to type in the calculator. There's a lot of opportunities for us to be able to make mistakes. So rather than trying to find B and C using the law of cosines, we could also use the law of sines. However, you might be thinking, ah, the law of sines is great, but what about the ambiguous case? Well, here's the tip that you don't see a lot of times in the textbook. If I use the law of cosines to go ahead and solve for A, right? We find A, we're good to go. Now, between B and C, which of them do I want to use to be able to solve for the law of sines? So I have my A and my angle, or my side length and my angle. I can use that as my ratio. Should I use a ratio with C or with B? And the answer is always use the smaller of the two angles. The reason being is the ambiguous case gives us the option that we could have that our angle B could either be acute or it could be obtuse, right? But if it's obtuse, we know that from triangles, there's only one obtuse angle, right? You can't have a triangle with more than one obtuse angle. And if you do have that obtuse angle, that means that's gonna be the largest side. We're protecting ourselves when we choose B because we know that five is less than seven. So whatever my angle B is, it has to be less than seven. So there's no way that angle B could be obtuse because if angle B was ever obtuse, it would have to have a larger opposing side than my seven, right? So therefore, I don't need to worry about the ambiguous case as long as I choose the smaller angle. Hope that helps.